mythic conquest arises, at first quietly and gradually, then a sudden and massive influx of nitrogens enter platonic vessels and secretly overwhelm Estuaria. The Estuarian's world is so changed that they can no longer survive as the vessels crash and decompose, filling the environment with toxic and malodorous residues, destroying Estuaria's harmony of life. The Oyster Collective enters, secure in its mission and competent in its task to assimilate and control the Nitrogens so that a healthy Estuaria can be restored. Welcome to Estuaria. As the Borg Collective traversed the universe, assimilating cultures into a common mind, the Oyster Collective assimilates nitrogens as it progresses through its, its life in the estuaries. Uh -huh. So this, this is the home of the Oyster Collective. And in the, in the estuaries, it looks like this. And oysters not only feed together, but they also propagate or breed together. And the puffs that you see here are oyster seeds being released to colonize the estuary. Yes, but even oysters do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Cole Porter. The focus of our story is upon Cape Cod estuaries. The priority area is in Falmouth, Massachusetts. Estuaries are coastal ponds that uh, are quite scenic and quite prevalent in this region. These estuaries are heavily impacted. Note the intense development on the, uh, around them. So what's happening is that there's a major nitrogen influx going into the ponds and it causes excessive growth or a cascading effect of excessive growth of plankton that dies, settles, and decomposes. Little Pond appears scenic and quite beautiful. And, and it's also connected to Vineyard Sound by a small channel for refreshing. The Little Pond is, however, in severe environmental trouble the nitrogen load has far exceeded the limits uh, uh, for a healthy environment. Bourne's Pond is also strikingly scenic. It has the same problems as do most estuaries, not only on Cape Cod, but along much, much of the coasts of the, of the United States and the world. So where does the nitrogen come from? The nitrogen comes from several sources from atmosphere, from the rain, from septic systems, from stormwater, from fertilizer runoff, and, and, uh, other, and also importantly, from decomposing sediment in the bottom of the estuaries. As when looking at estuaries, no two estuaries are alike. And as you can see here, there are different excessive loads in the water, and those excessive loads need to be removed or prevented from entering. Another important element that has been developed by the University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth is the concept of a sentinel threshold. A sentinel threshold is the healthy concentration of nitrogen in the estuary, in the ponds, that would enhance a good uh, ecosystem function and productivity. As you can see, all of the estuaries in the, in the priority area have exceeded that limit. So if we can bring that level down, we will have solved the problem. So the question is, can oyster aquaculture do what's needed? But before I answer that question, I'd like to take a brief trip to China. And if we look here at the way traditionally Chinese cities and towns, and also in Europe, similar situations existed in the Middle Ages, you have a cycling of nutrients. There's all, no waste, basically. All the organic matter is cycled in the surrounding areas to the, to the villages. And that's where very intensive food production takes place. And it's a, an important 
uh, area like the interfaces between different ecosystems uh, are also highly productive, as well as cell membranes and other interfaces. Within those systems are also integrated fish farms, and those farms cycle nutrients within the farms between agriculture, aquaculture, animal husbandry, and also in some cases will be involved in generating biogas. And then within those, we have the fish ponds, and then there are lots of nutrients available, and what the Chinese have done is to match the nutrient availability of planktons, benthos, and uh, grasses to, uh, to, to uh, match the fish to be able to take, to, to utilize those and keep, the, keep it a healthy system. Our estuaries can, look, can basically be managed in a similar way. This, uh, this story actually dates back to the 17th century AD, and, uh, and, but that's another digression, and I think I'd better move on. Um, this is a, a view of an integrated fish farm, and it shows you've got livestock houses on the dikes, grass is grown on the dikes, you've got mulberries, uh, uh, leaves that are grown for silkworm production, uh, silk production rather, and uh, also the, the, the fish culture. Very, uh, very dynamic eco farms. Now back to oysters. The, uh, West Bay is basically an integrated aquaculture system in that you have the oyster farms, but there's also other needs, such as navigation, recreation, are planned in placement of the farms. This is an important consideration. The, what, so what can oysters do? Back to the question. Uh, there's a time-lapse photograph showing that oysters are filtering the water. Uh, they filter about two gallons of water in an hour, and they can clarify the, uh, the environment, which allows sunlight to penetrate to the bottom and then eelgrasses can be restored and increase. Oysters also have, um, uh, are able to manage about 0.8 grams each. And if you look at like, one for, to, to manage one ton of nitrogen, it's, it would take about 1.25 million oysters. Now, in thinking about this, we can move toward a paradigm shift in which there's production of food and also job creation using those nutrients. This system is a floating system. It's better, there's no impact to the, to the pond bottom, and also the, the, the oysters can feed continuously without the intertidal parts. Now, if we look at an integrated strategy, we can start working first with the estuary and then moving up to up, upstream interventions, of which there are numerous, to, to capture nitrogen before it gets into the, into the groundwater and into the estuaries, and education and outreach is also critical. In considering the estuary, there are several, three factors to consider uh, from the, the aquaculture to clam, uh, fishery, as well as to protect critical habitats. These are some of the factors in term of, uh, that, that affect and need to be considered in terms of, of the aquaculture development. And social is important because of viewscape, recreational, navigational needs. If we look just at those four ponds that I identified, and used aquaculture only, we'd end up producing about 2,600 tons of oyster. Little pond is a little excessively, they would have to be developed a little bit too excessively, and therefore inlet widening, doubling the, the 10 foot wide inlet to 20 feet, you could reduce that area by about 50%. So what do we have? We can basically, through this concept, we can match the oyster aquaculture with nitrogen available, remove 26 tons of nitrogen, create 260 oyster farmer jobs, generate $15 million in revenue, $70 million in, in the multiplier effect of the local economy, as well as sequester 800 to 1,000 tons of carbon dioxide in the shell every year. So it's a win, win, win situation. Win, win. Thank you. Woo!